Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 150. You got the Nasdaq up 112. S&Ps are up 31. Our guest today, folks, is Michael Spitek. Michael is the co-founder and president of Detraxi. Now, Detraxi, folks, is spelled D-E-T-R-A-X-I. Website is D-E-T-R-A-X-I dot I-O. Uh, this is a St. Based. Uh, this is a St. Peters-based company offering cloud solutions for the next generation of satellites. They're currently competing for a Space Force contract after receiving a small business research grant from the Space Force. And we start talking disruptive architecture, disruptive technology. Uh, that's what it looks to me like this company's all about. Michael, welcome to TFNN. Thank you very much. Very nice to meet you. Thanks it's, for having me. It's great for you coming on, man. I was going to your website here. today, man. This is so cool, man. I need more than nine minutes for you, but let's get what we can get in nine minutes. Yeah, you just said it all. You got us right dialed in. You know, it's about disruption. It's about innovation. It's about bringing something new and exciting and, and some options out to a, an industry that, frankly, needs them. Yes. So tell us, right now, satellites and national security, where do we stand with that right now? It's a very good question. We, we stand at a moment where, you know, the government, the Department of Defense is looking for innovation. They're changing the ways not only that they do business, but the way uh, these entities all the way out to the software defined and the software enabled warfighter uh, works. Uh, you'll see a lot of, uh, of stuff out there about, uh, you know, the Deep Department of Defense, the Space Force, the various yes. elements moving over to the cloud moving their, their infrastructure, cloud enabling and virtualizing a lot of things, and our industry uh, is going to keep up. So the, the way uh, that uh, these warfighters, elements and sensors out in the field communicate are changing, and our industry is changing quickly uh, as part of that. Now, now, how is cloud computing gonna give us an edge in this, in this whole national defense deal? Well, <laughs> in terms of satellite, uh, you know, cloud is playing catch up to some extent. In cloud computing, the satellite industry has only really been involved on the edges. It's utilized cloud computing as a little piece of the puzzle. And as the DOD moves some of its real core functionality into the cloud, our industry has to do the same. And it really has it. They put little pieces here and there. They've done some connectivity with the cloud, but what they haven't done is move some core virtualized true infrastructural satellite functions to the cloud and that's what Detraxi is all about and when that's accomplished we're going to stand side by side in parallel with uh, the department of defense's uh, cloud capabilities very very um in very good lineup and now folks when you go to his website and it's detraxi.io so remember it's io d-e-t-r-a-x-i-o it's really cool when you go to the architecture part you're going to see disruptive architecture and you know what's so interesting, uh, Michael, is that, you know, you got uh, Jazzy taking over for Jeff Bezos on Tuesday, right? And when you read that whole deal about cloud computing between Bezos visual, I mean, because well, it's a virtual deal that we're talking about, right? I mean, first off, if, if the listeners and the watchers don't know, uh, virtualization and cloud computing, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform have changed the way we live our lives. They've yes. changed everything, everything. If you don't know, you can start looking into those elements. And they have brought down the cost. The, the company that we started back in St. Petersburg in 2002, I used to go into big data centers down in Miami and we would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on, on infrastructure, on servers, on satellite modem infrastructure, on all these elements. We had to buy all these super expensive hard pieces of metal. You don't have to do that anymore. And when you've done that, guess what? They're not that flexible. They're not that, you know, you pick up and have to move that stuff and you have to replicate it elsewhere. You're spending tons of amounts of money. but. On top of that, that every function that we do in our daily lives, from banking to email, everything, it's all virtualizing cloud hosts. Those companies are massive, massive impacts on our life. And the interesting part is the, the satellite industry is a niche of a niche of a niche, and we've kind of been a holdout. You know, uh, 10 years ago, the satellite industry was really locked up and no more 
than a, a dozen very large companies. And those companies, you know, obviously wanted to keep their piece of the pie and their businesses, uh, you know, profitable and moving sure. forward. But a lot of that positioning and the result of that as a kind of stifled innovation in our tiny, tiny little sector. Well, democratization is, is coming and democratization of space and what we call space 2.0 is here and a big part of that power is virtualization it's also um, accessibility accessibility to space and accessibility to capital and investment there's a lot of companies coming to bear uh, we read weekly about companies getting funded in our sector and it's really exciting the companies that are that are out there and following in the footsteps of some guys that have really kind of broken the glass ceiling in the last 10 years in our industry so now how it's did a great you, how time did to you be get in space. this business how did you get in this business Oh God, <laughs> do you remember the old days? Uh, I think you would remember in the 1990s uh, when a phone call cost $3 a minute to call internationally. Yes, yeah, for sure. And then in the blink of an eye, it cost ten uh, $10 a second, you know, I'm sorry, 10 cents a minute. Yes. In, in our calling cards, we sure. were part of that. That was an early space-based democratization where we would go out and build satellite antennas and infrastructure uh, in these countries and you know there would be competition where there was no competition before and once those big entities the, the major phone companies that were making millions and billions off of international long distance once there was true competition in this case enabled by space look what happened to that industry and that's really how we got into it it was actually a hurricane down in the Caribbean that knocked out long distance communications for more than a year and uh my brother was down in the Caribbean. I was here in Miami at the time, and uh, we picked up the yellow pages and started calling around and figuring out how to do satellite. That is so cool. So now let me let me ask you. So you, you have you got a grant, you know, from the Space Force to basically get something going. So you, you're taking that grant money, and what is your goal right now? Well, our goal at the moment uh, is to uh, socialize and introduce our technology around the Space Force find uh, individual elements of the Space Force and define, help uh, understand what their problems are and how our technology can positively impact. And that's been a very, very informative and positive uh, uh, evolution here in the last two months that we've been doing with the, in, in feeling around the Space Force. Our next phase, uh, if we're successful in the Space Force pitch day in, in August, is to actually make a demonstration of a real Space Force traffic across our virtualized elements. And what uh, we're doing is actually taking all those expensive pieces of hardware out of their very, very expensive places where they live today in access space, and we're gonna move all those pieces of the cloud. It's happening here and there in little pieces, but it's not happening holistically in one overall architecture. And that's what we're working towards. And we've had a lot of, uh, of positive uh, traction forward. We've got a plan going forward and a technology roadmap. And it's all green lights. We just have to uh, find the adoption, and we're hoping that uh, the United States Space Force can really help us open some doors. Well, congratulations. I, I think you, I think you're gonna score him, man. I mean, I went I went through your website. Yeah. We'll make sure you pump out there, man. It's you, you have a great idea, man. And you know, it, for for the normal like I'm not a, a, a geek, okay. But the bottom line, it's hard to understand. But because of cloud computing, I think we more can more of us can understand it every day. You know.